Today we are in the tranquil Suffolk countryside, as we are on the hunt for a beautiful monastic ruin hidden amongst various farmsteads and nature reserves. That ruin in question is none other than Leiston Abbey. The reason why this abbey in particular is so intriguing is that the entire building has travelled several miles from where it was originally built. In 1183 AD, Ranulf de Glanville founded a monastery in Minsmere, Suffolk. They were known as the White Canons, canons meaning the religious role, not the gun, and dedicated the site to St Mary. Picking the ideal location was difficult, as much of this Suffolk countryside was marshland at the time, yet there were a number of prosperous ports and harbours dotted along the local coastline such as Dunwich, Covehithe, Walberswick and Orford. As such, the White Canons decided to build their church at Minsmere, as this was just close enough to the sea that exporting importing trade would be easy, but not too close that the ground was too marshy to be functional. The monastic house was in use for almost 200 years as the region of East Anglia continued to develop and prosper. However, over these centuries, the soils gradually turned more and more marshy and unusable, which not only caused issues with agriculture, but also began to crack and fracture the abbey itself. The damage caused by subsidence and flooding became too much to handle, so the abbot decided to make drastic action, and ordered the deconstruction of the entire abbey and its monastic buildings, and moved the stone two miles further inland to its current home here at Leiston. Interestingly, although all building material had been removed from the old abbey grounds, with the exception of some lumps and bumps in the ground, a stone chapel was erected on the site of the original monastery shortly after its demolition, most likely as homage to the consecrated grounds on which the abbey had stood. Until very recently, it was thought that the 14th century chapel at Minsmere was a surviving part of the original abbey. The fate of the original abbey at Minsmere was one of the first of many natural disasters that plagued the East Anglian coastline. Rising sea levels brought on from a periodic warm cycle and the reoccurrence of multiple devastating storms caused the waves of the North Sea to tirelessly batter at the Norfolk cliffs and beaches. As a result, large swathes of land were flooded, harbours silted up and coastal towns fell into the sea, the most famous of which were Dunwich and the unsung hero, Shipton. Shipton was a coastal town which is now situated a quarter of a mile out to sea north of Cromer, Norfolk. During the 14th century, the sea swallowed up the entire town, with the medieval graveyard being one of the last landmarks to fall victim to the tides in 1336 AD. By the year 1400, the only sign of Shipton was the parish church tower, which continued to stand proud from the waves right up until the 19th century, and was named Church Rock, as the large square flint steeple could be seen from the modern coastline. In 1888, a steamer named SS Victoria ran aground on the church tower as it was just hidden below the waves. This was confirmation for the local council to deem the submerged church a hazard, so it was agreed that explosives would be used to make the tower a much lower structure in the sea. In 1986, Martin Warren and David Pope completed a diving mission where they successfully mapped out a portion of Shipton's layout, including the location of the church. They confirmed that the remains of the structure still survived underwater, which are now acting as a man-made reef for a variety of fish, crabs and lobsters who thrive within the Norfolk Chalk seabed. Indeed, if you are not to count the reefs built as military obstacles, the medieval stone town of Shipton is the earliest man-made reef in the world. Warren and Pope managed to retrieve a few artefacts from their dive, including some masonry which was laying on the ocean floor. Today you can visit the Cromer Heritage Museum and see the artefacts for yourself. So, just like the townsfolk of Shipton, the cannons at Minsmere were forced to resettle further inland. In 1362, the abbot obtained a royal license to rebuild the abbey, and the Ufford family, a local influential family of the gentry, funded and oversaw much of the building works. Within ten years of this new construction, a fire broke out which destroyed every part of the monastery except the church. However, the bountiful stores of grain, corn and other goods were destroyed in the inferno. It is not confirmed, but there are some historians who believe this fire may have been a malicious act carried out by locals, as this event coincides with the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, where a fierce uprising took place between the townsfolk and the church in East Anglia, and inevitably, the king. Regardless, funds were found to rebuild the abbey, and on a surprisingly impressive scale. 
Anglian flushwork architecture was implemented in much of the new construction, which was a highly sought after and very ornate architectural design during the 14th and 15th centuries. During the beginning of the 16th century, a large brick gatehouse with octagonal towers was erected at the western end of the church nave. This would be the final addition to the abbey before its demolition in 1537 due to the dissolution of the monasteries act imposed by King Henry VIII. Leaston Abbey is now looked after by the English Heritage, and in 1977 the abbey ruins were purchased by the Procorder Trust, a school for classical musicians. Orchestral music can often be heard while walking around the site, the sound echoing throughout the medieval ruins.